Taichi Five. Real Muto, here's his stat lines. 99 games played, 266, 322, 429 slash line, an OPS plus of 109. 14 homers on the year, 47 RBIs, 34 extra base hits, and two stolen bags. A 1.84 top pop time, still the best in baseball for a catcher. Defensively, the guy's aces. You know, his arm is excellent. Uh, the pitching staff loves him. Some of the pitchers' numbers are way better with him and a backup catcher. So defensively, he's fine. Uh, arm, fine. Athleticism, still fairly fine. Like, he still looks like he can run well. Uh, but he had about 120 less at bats this year than the year prior. Mm -hmm. uh, he didn't really bounce back from the injury as well uh, in the season. His batting average in OBP actually went up, which kind of surprised me mm -hmm. uh, because I wouldn't have guessed that before I dove into the stats. His slugging in OPS decreased, uh, which does make sense because he seemed to be driving the ball less and, and moving runs uh, like he had in the past. His OPS plus actually increased slightly, Kind of a strange year because my gut reaction was again like C plus. Yeah. Um, power and uh, his RBIs dropped. Um, I'm gonna go B minus. It's Ooh. it's better than what my gut said just looking at the numbers. Uh, <laughs> but you obviously want and need more from JT. The question is, is he on the backside uh, of his prime here? Um, so I'm gonna go B minus for JT Real Muto. Professor Ice Queen, <laughs> the floor is yours. Thank you. Larry's Backyard Barbecue. Yeah, we're pretty much <laughs> simpatico there. C plus, B All right, minus. Thank you, Professor Fluff. Um, listen, B JT, minus is not like roses. JT That's is like also one of my higher graded players for the day. I won't say oh what his grade is quite yet. But JT, uh, as I grade for the entire season, but I grade with a higher expectation for the postseason. And when oh. you have been one of the best <laughs> catchers in baseball, for your, you know, the last ye few years, and you go hitless, hitless in the NLDS, that immediately drops your grade down. We know he went over 11 in the NLDS, three walks, um, and a .751 OPS, as you mentioned, in the regular season. Now, there are some numbers that are pretty alarming for JT Romino. Obviously, he's not getting any younger. <laughs> None of us are, guys. We're all getting older. But he's also in a spot now where you can see a regression in his career. And I feel like for JT Romino, although he was still better than the average catcher in terms of his average um, and also had the lowest single season OPS of his, of his Phillies tenure, he also, the pop time, the arm strength, were still there. So I was like, okay, we did see some good you know, response and play from him in terms of his pop time. He did have a 20% caught ceiling rate, which is right below the league average of 21%. He had a that 1.85 average pop time, which ranked the 97th percentile for the league in 2024. And even his arm strength on throws to second base, 82.6 mile per hour, which ranked seventh among catchers. But for J2 Remuto to offensively take such a major step back we know about the injuries, which is concerning, the knee procedure, the different injuries he had. He got beat up this season, hit multiple times, and he was limited because of that. But you do have expectations of him as being one of the best catchers in baseball offensively. And so his F4, a 4.7, which is um, still high, higher than even someone like Will Smith of the Dodgers, who's headed to the World Series. But again, it all goes back to me, the fact that JT Romuto in the playoffs did not show up and was never the same after getting back from his knee procedure, to be honest. I give JT Romuto a C plus on the season. Okay. I think he was average. And I think, unfortunately for him, we don't want or expect average from JT. But the reality is, I, this is who he is now. I think he is not going him. to be. Yeah, you I know? think this is an it was an average season for him. His numbers weren't great. He is aging. He is regressing, unfortunately, uh, offensively specifically. And I think it's now time to start thinking about the reality of who is the backup catcher. But I think for what he gave you and with how much he's played, I ex you expect him to take a step back. It's now time for the Phillies to help support him and give him a better backup catcher. So C-plus is my grade for Jade Silvermuto. And I think overall, um, he's 20, he's 30, 33. 
You know, this is kind of what you expect from a catcher yeah. that's played so many games. It just you cannot have an 0 for 11 and an LDS. That's unacceptable. All right, Tyler, we got a B minus and a C plus kind of. Yeah, I think that those are grades there. What do you got? Those are relatively fair. And I think that, uh, Renee, you and I are going to agree on this one. I'm going to go with <gasps> a C plus as well for this one because you're right. Defensively, the metrics are still there. Uh, I have questioned JT's pitch sequencing for quite some time now, but it's it's pretty obvious that like JT is. Zach Wheeler is better when JT is on the mound. Ooh, I think yeah. Christopher Sanchez is better. Or excuse me, when, when JT's behind the plate. I think Christopher Sanchez is better when JT's behind the plate. The only one whose metrics actually were better with anybody else <laughs> is Aaron Nola throughout the, the course of the season. It's <laughs> strange, but it's it was true. Um, JT is still a good defensive catcher. The, the pop time that you guys referenced is clearly still there. He still is one of the best the, uh, catchers at throwing runners out at second base. Um, offensively, he was fine. Uh, you guys talked about the pop just really not being there as much. He really didn't square up a ton of balls this year under the 20th percentile. His whiff rate went up a little bit. His K rate, K rate was about the same as it was a season ago. Um, the slugging dipped almost 30 points, and that is probably due in, due in part to the fact that his doubles came down a pretty significant number. Mm -hmm. Now, granted, he did play significantly fewer games, um, but I don't ask JT to be a home run guy. I ask JT to be a doubles guy, to be a gaps yeah. hitter. JT is really, really good or has been throughout his career at going to right center field and driving the ball the other way with some power. Um, his launch angle was down on just about every type of pitch this year, uh, from a fastball to a breaking ball to an off-speed pitch. But the, the, the thing that I think got him... Uh, a decent bit. He saw 180 off-speed pitches, namely change-ups for the most part. Mm -hmm. uh, but you could you could you know mix some other things in there. He hit 122 on off-speed pitches this Jeez. year. He struck out 21 times in 49 at bats on off-speed pitches. His exit velocity was 81 on the balls that he put in play. <laughs> Offensively, JT has taken a step backwards, and I think he's probably mm -hmm. going to continue to take a step backwards as he gets a little bit older. I, I, I have hope that maybe it's a stall year next year because he is healthy from the injury yeah. fully. Um, but we talked about JT probably right about this point last year where I feared that the offense kind of has – Plateaued. It's never going to I, – yeah. and I don't even yeah. know about plateau well, because I think be a decreasing. couple of years it's been but decreasing. Best, plateau, and yeah. I think yeah. now at this point it's it's pretty evident that he has um, been surpassed offensively by a handful of catchers. We talked about Adley Rutschman last year, had an awesome first half of the year, got hit in the hand midway through June, and was really never the same offensive player mm -hmm. that he was. But, like, there's a handful of guys now that I can name – as offensive catchers that I would prefer over yeah. JT, where that answer a couple years ago was really not many, if any. Defensively, he still holds up. Offensively, I think he has taken a step backwards. Um, his exit velocity on just about everything this year has gone down, uh, you know, not like substantially, but he was under 90 miles yeah. an hour as an average this year. JT gets a C-plus for me because of the defense, because of the, the caught-stealing rate. The offense was not particularly strong this I year. do actually want to add, because it's a great and point you bring up. the 0 for 11 is substantial. The now, 0 for 11 the, is a problem. Substantial in the postseason. Huge problem. 